Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson in Unit 6. This time we're going to be going over uh, Lesson 2, which is the searching algorithm for arrays. Um, specifically, this is going to be the linear search algorithm, which is the first type of algorithm we are going to be exploring in arrays. So searching an array, um, what is it? Okay, it's hopefully obvious what it's going to be doing. Um, you're searching an array for something, um, specifically for an element of some kind. Um, in a linear search algorithm, we search the array for um, a specific element by doing the following. We start at index 0, and we go up through the array one element at a time. We check to see if wherever, whatever the current index we're at is, if that element is what we're looking for. Um, if it is, we communicate the index where we found the element we are looking for. Um, if we look through the whole array and we don't find the element, we want to communicate an index that is not possible, right? And that kind of flags it and tells um, whatever called the method or whatever called this segment of code that, hey, we didn't find what you were looking for. So the standard is to return a negative one or to communicate a negative one if we can't find what you are looking for. Um, this is very similar to the string method dot index of um, and then in quotes we put what we are looking for in a string. Um, that method returns a negative one if that substring or letter can't be found. Otherwise, it communicates the index where it is, okay, the first location of it. And that's what's going to happen in our linear search algorithm. Um, now, there's several different searching algorithms. Um, the two most common are linear and binary. We're going over the linear search algorithm right now. The binary search algorithm is going to be done in the next unit, in unit 7, um, and also talked about the recursive binary search in unit 10. Um, but those are the only two searching algorithms we are going to make sure that you understand. Okay. Now, do you have to have these algorithms memorized? Um, I mean, people would tell you no, but I'm going to I'm going to tell you yes. Okay. Uh, you'll use them enough, and hopefully they'll make sense to the point where you do it a couple times and you kind of understand how to do it anyway. Um, there's different variations of small variations of this algorithm. Um, but you're going to want to know how to code a segment of a program that looks through an array sequentially. Okay, So starting at index 0 and looking through. So here are the steps for a linear search algorithm. Um, uh, on the left are the actual steps written out, and then on the right we're going to write the algorithm, the code out as a static method. So Part one, if we're writing this as a method, right? The method will be passed two parameters. It needs the array um, that's going to be searched through, and it's going to be the value that we want to find in that array. Um, it will return the location of the value, or a negative one if it's not found. So taking that into account, our method for this is going to is going to be static. Um, it's going to return an int. It's going to return the location, the index of whatever it's looking for. I'm going to call it linear search and we're going to use a string, an array of strings. This can be modified, we'll see here in a little bit, for an, an array of integers, array of booleans, whatever it may be. We're going to use an array of strings and we're going to try to find a specific word in this array called word. Okay. The next step is to start at the beginning of the array and loop through all the elements of the array. Hopefully that sounds familiar because that's traversing through an array starting at index 0 and going all the way to the end, um, which we did extensively in the last lesson. Um, so here's our familiar loop header uh, looking through the entire array. The next step is to check each element to see if it's equal to the value you are looking for. And if it is, you want to return that index. Okay. So um, I'm trying to find word. And I'm going to look through each element of ARR. So it's going to be ARRI. And I'm going to see if it's equal to word. And since we're working with strings, we have to use the dot equals method. 
So I ask a question, is the element equal to word? Okay. And again, I use the dot equals because we're working with strings. If we're working with ints, it would be an equal equal to sign. If it is, I want to return that index. Okay. So notice the way it's written. This linear search will return the index um, that word is located in first. Right? So if you have a huge array of string values, it's going to return the first location of that word. Even if the word appears multiple times throughout the array, it's going to return that first location. Okay. And then if you loop through the whole array and you didn't find what you were looking for, you want to return a negative one. So outside the for loop, we write return negative one, meaning we went through this whole for loop didn't find what we were looking for, so you return a negative one to communicate that. And that's your linear search algorithm. Okay. Um, so again, you can apply little changes to this algorithm to get it to um, accomplish whatever task you want it to do. So our last example in this set of notes um, is just a little modification of this linear search algorithm. It says write a method called index of last that accepts an array of integer values and a value that you are searching the list for. So if you have an array of integer values, you're searching the array for an integer value. <laughs> the method returns the last index, the largest index or the last index that the value is located at, not the first. Okay? So what we just did, we would return the first index. This wants to know the last index. So it's just a minor, a minor change in, um, uh, in the linear search algorithm. Oh, I guess I have it all at once. So if you want to try writing this, you can. Um, I'm going to go back real quick and just talk about how I would modify this. So first, it's an array of integers. And it's um, looking for an int. OK. Right? It's going to still it's still going to return an int cuz it's still returning an index. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a variable. Um I think I called it last. Did I call it last? Just so I can be consistent. Yeah. I'm going to introduce a new variable called last. I'm going to set it equal to negative 1 right away. Um so that I'm going to return last. So if I go through this whole for loop again and I don't find what I'm looking for, last is still negative one. So I'm going to return last. And here, so I'm going to check if the element is equal to what I'm trying to find. And here, instead of a return statement, I'm just going to put last equals i. Okay, Meaning that if the array element is equal to what I'm trying to find, I want to record where that index is. But I still want my for loop to keep going. Just because I find it once, I still want it to keep going because if it finds it again, that's going to be my, my last index, right? I want it to keep going and find that last index. So those are the minor modifications I'm going to make to this linear search algorithm, this linear search code, um, to accomplish what this wants me to do. Okay. So you'll see here in past an array of integer values, what you want it to find. I called it last, still traversing through the array. We're checking to see if the element is equal to what we want to find. And if it is, I just want to keep track of that index. I don't need to keep track of the value. That I already know what the value I'm trying to find is. I want to keep track of the index. Okay. Look good? Okay. That's the end of this section of notes. We're just, we were just going over the linear search algorithm. Um, again, we're going to go over binary search in the next unit. I just want to make sure to cover the linear search algorithm right now for you guys. So thank you so much for following along and I will see you next time.